the next step on the Emerson is getting this old output transformer off the speaker, which you see I've started doing, um, kind of difficult. Uh, at some point, I may want to try and investigate the speaker, and um, I'm gonna hang on to it. I, I just, I, you know, right now, I, I don't really feel like doing it, but uh, basically what I can do here is remove some of this paper wrapping and um, see if there's a break in the field coil close to these wires. Um, and if so, the idea is I can repair it or possibly just, you know, trim it there and put a new wire on it and use it with a few less turns. Um, doesn't really matter that much. That's a possibility down the road. And what I did find was I found a six and a half inch speaker this is uh, eight ohm is from a, like a stereo system or something. Um, what's really nice about that one, it mounts perfectly in the cabinet. Like it lines up to the existing holes perfectly. Getting this output transformer onto that speaker may not happen. Uh, I may have to mount this somehow in the cabinet itself, which I'm okay with. I really don't care. It's like, who's gonna look in the back? I don't know. I put on some new leads to go to the speaker. I also put some shrink tubing on the field coil wires. Uh, reason I'm doing that instead of just removing them, um, if I do ever get to the speaker and try and get it working and uh, I end up getting the field coil back going again, um, I'll have the wires right there. I can just re reconnect it. Um, now, so what I'm gonna do, I think, is I think I'm gonna mount this in the cabinet, try to put something to hold these down in the cabinet, and then I'll have the wires, I'll you know, trim them or whatever, uh, to go to the speaker. Oh, man, hey, wait, sir. oh I don't I know, I know, I know. I know, and, and the, well, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, Eddie, listen, we are, listen, we never- Speaker is working. Sounds fine. So we know we have a working radio, speaker works, need to replace this dial belt. So I'll show you how I do that when that comes in. I added a new antenna wire back here. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's really in pretty good shape. It's just a matter of getting the, um, the dial belt put in. Got the dial belt in. It's a, uh, basically it's a, um, just a piece of rubber like this. And what we're going to do is it looks like the easiest way to get at this is to, um, remove this piece right here. So that'd be this screw and this right here. And it looks like as soon as that comes out, you should be able to slip the belt in there and then attach it to the top. So we're gonna try that. So you can see here, I removed this screw. This is actually completely free now. So what I'm gonna do is take this belt here and just stick it through here. And now I can then put that back. Now, before I put it back, uh, I am going to clean it up a little bit. Now you can see we've got the dial belt on. is not too hard. It really was just removing this one screw, slipping it around the shaft, and then bringing it up over this pulley here. So, as you can see, the dial now turns the way it's supposed to. We're gonna do an alignment here, just a real quick alignment. The radio on and my signal generator set it about 456, which is what the instructions say. They want us to clip one side of the generator to the chassis. And here we go. So we also need to decrease 
the tuning to the fully meshed position. Here's our signal you can hear. Now it's not quite in alignment, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn these screws here till we hear that tone better. Okay. You can hear how that improved it. Let's go ahead here. Come on, we go ahead and do it again. Come on. That's pretty good alignment. All right. The next thing we have to do is feed a signal into the antenna and we want about 600 for that. So let's go ahead, oh, wrong way. How about, the, how about going the right way? Here is 600. I have a dummy antenna hooked up. And we're gonna tune the radio to 600. You should hear my signal generator. Okay, so the signal generator <coughs> is coming in a bit low. So what we can do, let's do that. So that's exactly 600. That's pretty good. <clears throat> that's really close, okay. So the alignment was moderately successful. Um, couple little things I noticed high up on the band it seems to kind of drop off um, could be the oscillator tube is a little weak I don't see any issues with the plates being blocked but you notice here so I got 1200 and then I got nothing So something's going on here. It could be the plates are touching somewhere. I can investigate that. An article about how the Yankees need to change what they perceive. So pretty happy with it so far. Dial belt works really well. Um, speaker works great. Fits in the cabinet. Um, sounds really good. I've checked a couple of voltages and uh, pretty close. Um, the B plus is, you know, a little high, but that's to be expected because uh, line voltage here is about 120, 121, uh, compared to the 117 and a half that they're, um, you know, talking about on the uh, service data. You know, most uh, most of these Emersons I've worked on seem to be above average in terms of sensitivity. You know, I don't know why people always say that the Emersons are, you know, cheap radios and nice cabinets, but uh, honestly, my experience is that um, they're, you know, simple designs, um, but they're above average performance. And um, that's kind of about what I'm seeing here. I mean, this is a, you know, basically a 5-tube radio and it's performing better than I would expect a 5-tube radio to perform. I'm gonna take a look, I'm gonna shut this off and uh, I'm gonna shut it off now. Take a look at that, uh, see if I can clean out those plates on the tuning capacitor and uh, hopefully that'll solve the problem. I mean, if it doesn't, it may be a weak oscillator tube. 98% um, of the stations that I wanna listen to are under 1200 anyway, so I, for me it doesn't matter, but um, if I can do a simple quick fix, then sure. So the um, bell cover for the Emerson just came back. And um, so, got it. so basically, um, what they do 
is they put the new dial cover inside the old bezel. So this here is the new dial cover. And you can see I cleaned up the bezel a lot, so that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to put it right in the, uh, the radio. So I'm going to go ahead and put the new dial bezel in the radio. Um, you can see a glued side. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. So I think the cabinet will turn out pretty nice. Go ahead and put the dial bezel in so it drops in. And then I'm going to reach under and just bend the tabs over to hold it in. And we have a nice, clean, new dial cover. So we got the Emerson powered up outside of the cabinet. Probably. For the last time. It's playing pretty well. I still can't solve that problem of the oscillator quitting. Um, and I looked everywhere. I do not have another 6A7. Um, this one tests marginal. Um, most likely replacing it will solve the problem. I just, like I said, I don't have one. Um, next time I order tubes, I'll put it in in the order and uh, swap it out and just see what happens. But in general, it's working all right. The you know three or four stations I listen to are all you know underneath um, what thirteen hundred or wherever it cuts off. So I'm not too upset about it. Um, and I really don't use shortwave. There's not that much on it anymore, unfortunately. Um, and this is kind of limited anyway. You're, you're really limited from about 2.3, it looks like, 2.2, up to, you know, 7 or 8 megacycles. I think the big thing was it was a selling point. You know, it's like, oh, this radio has shortwave. You're, you're getting more for your money. Um, plays really well, though. Uh, on, on AM, so I'm pretty happy with it. It's fine. Um, yeah, so the next step will be just putting it back together and uh, getting it back in the cabinet. Go ahead and put the speaker back in the cabinet. I've angled it so that the um, attachment points are on the right here. I'm going to anchor this over here somewhere. I'll leave it like that. Put a bracket right here with the output transformer connected to the cabinet. It's only one, but uh, it should stay, I think. What I need to do now is clean up these knobs. They're uh, a little dirty. So I'm gonna do that now. What I use for this is an old toothbrush and this um, plain Gojo, which is also great for doing um, things like uh, wooden cabinets. So you want to kind of just brush it on there um, as good as you can get and then you let it sit and you do the next one. So you kind of just do that. Continue. Okay, knobs are cleaned up pretty well. I'm gonna just attempt to polish them a little bit and then uh, we'll put them on the radio. To polish them, I use the same stuff I use for Bakelite radios. It's this stuff, works pretty well. And here we go, here's the radio. Got the nice new dial cover on it. Knobs have been cleaned up and polished. I repaired the damage here and here. It doesn't look amazing, but it's fine. Grill cloth has a little tear in it. Um, the rest of it's fine, so I'm going to leave it. Polish the cabinet pretty well, so that looks good. I have the chassis and speaker installed. I put the output transformer over there. And um, we'll go ahead and power it up, see what it's like acts of sabotage there and blame them on Ukraine to create a pretext for a possible invasion. I'm Charles de la Desma. WCBS News Time 320.
about 6.48 tonight, if you can see the thing with all the craziness going on outside. It's called a wolf moon because you're more likely to hear a wolf howling at this time of year. Our radio to work for you. There's so many little interference here. So I don't know what this static is, but uh, it's not the radio. It's definitely something in the house or uh, potentially in, um, you know, maybe a light that's on or something like that. Now, you could argue, well, this they were going for it. Jimmy Garoppolo is 660 sports Hornets. radio. That's W O R. Some religious station. That's W A B C. Don't know what this is. Not sure. That was our oldie station, which turned into a. Mexican, Spanish, whatever station, uh, and interestingly enough, my theory on Spanish language stations is they always come in, no matter what, you can have 15 English language stations that you can't get, but the Spanish one will always come in, and it's kind of funny, because ever since they um, switched over, they um, now come in great. This is animal shelters are seeing a spike in donations today on Mother's Day. Sports Knicks lost to Charlotte CBS at the Garden. That's a plan. From New York City, which comes in better than anything local around here, but whatever. I'm not sure what this is here. Akram was dead. Late Sunday, British police revealed the two have been arrested in connection with the first news station. No details. Used to be a pop station in the 60s. Now it's a news station. And I'm not sure what that is. 1080 maybe? Uh, it's, no, it's Bloomberg 1100. And then we start losing our oscillator. Whatever. It's mostly working. <laughs> 